this shit is bigger than that. Okay, we'll just go with this. Uh, team racing. So, um, generally, can anyone describe to me what team racing is? I've lost the names now that I'm in this view. Oh, tech. Uh, Jack, call on someone for me. Um, I'll go to Laura. Laura, well, what's team racing? Team racing is when you have a number of boats or two teams of boats and you need them to, rather than the first boat across the line wins, you combine the scores and the three boats with the lowest score win. Yeah, I love it. It's, I think of it as three boats versus three boats, the team with the lowest score win. So base versus Bowden, um, instead of each boat thinking individualistically and wanting to win the race, you are thinking as a team and um, trying to move your boats across the course and have the lowest score. Your incentives are different. So you're gonna do weirder things you wouldn't otherwise do. Like in a, in a regular fleet race, you'd never go backwards and do something weird at a mark that you just passed, but in team race, you're gonna do some weird stuff. Um, but generally, team racing is manipulating the rules, um, the regular old sailing rules to move your team to have the highest score. Let's talk about what, out of six boats, what are winning combos? If you get first or second, you win the race. If you get first or third, you win the race. If your boat's finished in two, three, four, you win the race. Two, three, five, you win the race. One, four, five, you win the race. Everything else you'll lose. These are combos that I haven't even thought of, but three, five, six is bad. Uh, one, five, six is bad. Two, yada, yada, yada. These are your winning combos right here. We'll, we'll talk about how to get to those, how to keep them, what's good, what's bad. The race course is a little different in team racing. Um, it's called the digital N. So we have a start. It would be between a, a race committee boat and a pin. But um, we start here. We tack, tack, tack up to mark one. We'll discuss the implications of all these marks. We reach over to this reach leg at mark two. We head down, reach, reach, reach to mark three, come over to mark four, which is an offset, tack, 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 up to the finish. Um, uh, if you're not winning a team race, you're losing it, which is obvious to say, but the goal of it, or the, um, what I want to pound into your head is that you want to make moves throughout the team race, if ever you're losing, to switch to an advantageous position. So if you're losing here, then you make a move here. If you're losing at this point, you make a move here. You just attack. You never wait to, um, to uh, increase your odds of winning. We'll, we'll get to that. So team racing is using the rules to gain your advantage. So I'm going to go back into a deep dive of regular basic rules to um, figure out how we can use them to our advantage in a team race. I wish I could see your name, but I can't. Oh, I got him. But then you can't see the thing. Sorry, y'all. Anyway. Um, we can still see if you keep our names up. It's only showing your, your window. Oh, it doesn't show Zoom? Nope. Oh, great. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, now the names still don't pop up. I'll just have you, I'll just have you copy, copy for me, Jack. Um, so does anybody... Have a, does anyone not have a strong, firm grasp of the regular racing rules of sailing? Peter, you don't, okay. Um, well, the, the, main, the main like four racing rules of sailing are what I'm about to go over right now. So there's port starboard, that's rule 10. If, a, if two boats are approaching one another and one is on port and one is on starboard, who has right of way Lutton? Starboard. I know it sounds basic, but uh, it, it starts to, it, these rules start to build on one another. Cool. If two boats are on the same tack, however, uh, or uh, sorry, they're both on starboard, but one boat is clear ahead and one boat is clear astern, who has right? Um, my junior, who is not a captain, whose name I'm forgetting at this exact moment. Smacking. That's me, I think. I don't know the yeah. answer. Um, I would say clear ahead. Uh, clear ahead wins. Yeah, no rear ending. I'll just say that. So the first two rules we have are um, 
court boats, avoid starboard boats, and don't rear end boats. So if you're behind, if you're clear behind a boat, you can't hit a boat that is clear ahead of you. Um, yeah. Moving on. So as part of this uh, clear ahead, clear astern business, we're going to talk about overlap. Um, blue hoodie. I'm going to become best friends with you guys on the alumni regatta, but right now I'm going to not fairly know the names. Blue hoodie. Uh, can you explain the concept of overlap? Is that referring to me? It is referring to you. All right. Oh, it's a computer, <laughs> I guess. Uh, overlap is when your bow and their stern are crossing or not crossing, like uh, overlapping yeah, so each other, I guess. Somewhat. Look at if you can see my diagram. There are invisible lines extending beyond the um, transom and bow of your boat. And if boats are fall within those, uh, technology, man. So right now these boats are not overlapped. Tell me when they are. They're overlapped now. Yes, they are. They're not overlapped now. They are overlapped now. Um, so currently these boats aren't overlapped. And when one boat is approaching without overlap from behind and they hit another boat, they are at fault. Um, so in any of these situations, there is one boat that is the right of way boat, and there's one boat that is the keep clear boat. Um, friend who has the rug on her ceiling, uh, what is the obligation of a uh, right of way boat? Um, they have to keep their course. Excellent, Sorry. perfect answer. Um, and friend who has shiny windows behind them, uh, who, uh, gray hoodie, I think. Is that, that's me, I think. Yes, Ryan, okay. Ryan. Ryan, um, what is the obligation of a keep clear boat? Um, uh, well, they can't hit the, uh, right of way boat. Yeah, it's to keep clear. I'm kind of checking you. So there's, there in, in any of these, uh, Interactions when boats meet. There's one boat that is a that is a right of way boat. There uh, and there's one boat that is a keep clear boat. So I'll just call this the keep clear boat. This boat's obligation is to keep clear. So in this situation, we'll call it a port starboard. I'm a port boat. I'm avoiding you. I'm a starboard boat. I'm going to hold my course. We don't want both boats to be avoiding each other and hitting each other. Um, so we are figuring out that a port boat is a keep clear boat. A boat that is clear stern is a keep clear boat. And next up, boats tacking have no right. Um, if a boat is sailing along on starboard and a port boat is approaching them, right when they cross head to wind, they become um, a keep clear boat. And this port boat is now having to duck a boat that is uh, that they shouldn't be ducking. So this port boat becomes the right of way boat and the boat tacking has no right. So our first three rules here are port starboard, clear head, clear stern, and boats tacking have no right. Next up, we have um, uh, windward leeward. Jack, can you explain the concept of windward leeward, windward boats versus leeward boats? The windward boat, which is the yellow boat, uh, has to keep clear of the leeward boat uh, because they are the leeward boat and have less access to the wind and less ability to theoretically move. Uh, cool. Can um, uh, my other captain, who uh, I'm about to answer now, can you tell me what makes a leeward boat a leeward boat? Um, yeah, it's Allie. Hi. Um, Allie. The leeward boat is behind the windward boat, which is closer to the windward mark. Right. Um, no. There's I'm so off. many ways to think about it. No, you're right. You're right. Promise I know off. this. It's just the explaining. I figured out the names, everybody. I got them. Um, I figured out a way to do it. Okay, so I think of it like whichever side the skipper's on, that's what you are for starboard and port. So that's my way of thinking about starboard and port. And then the way I think about leeward and windward is whoever can tack first is the windward boat, and whoever is kind of bound by another boat to windward is the leeward boat. Um, Ryan, does that make sense? This this boat is the windward boat because they can tack first. This one is kind of stuck to leeward of that boat, so they're leeward. That makes sense. Okay, well, it gets a little weirder when you're dead downwind. This is how I always, so now who's the windward boat? Um, I wish I had the names, they're so close. 
Claudia, who is the winner boat in this one? Um, is it the yellow one? Yeah, why is it the yellow one? Um, isn't it like the wind will hit it, hit the yellow one before the other one or something like that? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Lure and wind were so weird, but very critical to team racing. It's, I, the way I think of it again is um, who can tack first? So like if this yellow boat tried to tack and this pink boat tried to tack, the pink boat would be, uh, would have a, a, the yellow boat in, the, in its way. Peter, how, how would you describe a lure boat versus a windward boat? You might be muted, Peter. Peter, you're muted. He's out. Um, Pat, how would you describe a lure boat? Well, I think I'd normally say it's farther downwind, but in this example, it doesn't really work. But the both boats are on starboard, and the red boat is to the left of the yellow boat. I'm not really sure how to explain it other than I know which one is. is okay, lower. as long as you know it, as long as everyone sort of knows it. But like, I can all I can show you is a couple of pictures, like this and this one. This pink one is the lure boat, and this one, the pink, is also the lure boat. Um, maybe the, I don't know. Let's just look at them for a second, try to try to figure out in our minds why the wind goes past the the uh, yellow boat and hits the the pink boat. That's upwind. Downwind's a little bit more confusing. Um, maybe if you're gonna, if there's a sail in your way, you're the lure boat. No great way to figure it out for this situation, but that's what a lure boat is. Super crucial for team racing. We'll, we'll move on for now, but that's that's important. Um, okay, the reason I'm talking all about luffing right uh, about proper core, uh, uh, sorry about windward lured is because in team racing you are allowed to um, sail to leeward of someone and take them up and say head up, head up, head up, head up, and make them bluff um, all the way head to win. Has anyone ever done anything like that in team racing or have you ever experienced that where you lost somebody? Um, Sophie, have you been in that position? Can I have a hand up if we're skippers or crews? So hands up for skippers. Okay, so kind of like half and half. Oh, Emily, Tommy, can you um, just move your uh, your screen is a little off the, the page. Oh, sorry, buddy, thank you. All good. Um, okay, so um we can luff other boats in team racing um and i can explain to you how so it, it's it's helpful because let's just say in a um you are in first place and there is a boat a bad guy behind you and you want to bring your friend up until into second place in team racing you can stop your boat push that bad guy up into head to wind hold them there and have your friend go uh sail past okay so windward boats have to avoid lured boats we know that but um, most of the or some of the time the lured boat is bound by proper course lutton do you know what proper course is proper course is the way that you would sail to the next mark in the absence of any other boats couldn't have said it better myself Maybe, maybe even uh, I'll, I'll see goodness of events that better myself. In typical fleet racing, you can, uh, windward boats have to avoid leeward boats, but it's under the assumption that you are both sailing toward the next mark. You're not deliberately trying to mess up someone else's race. You are bound by your proper course, pretty much. Um, so what is my proper course? I can't really argue that it's to sail way the heck over there. It's pretty much sailing to the next mark. Um, but in team racing, we get a little, we, we, um, we are not always bound by proper course, technically in fleet racing either, but it's really applicable in team racing. Okay. The way that we figure out whether we're bound by proper course or whether we're allowed to just take boats up and lust them and hold them and really mess up their race is, um, is determined by how we initially establish overlap. So, um, Overlap again is two boats are sailing along. They're currently not overlap, and then they sail into overlap with one another. So two boats are are they're not associated with each other, and then one boat sails to leeward, and now 
now they're overlapped, or one sails to windward, and now they're overlapped. Okay. How we establish overlap is super important for how, uh, whether we have lopping rights or proper course restrictions. Um, so I'll explain one more time. When two leeward boats meet, windward leeward boats meet, the windward boat must avoid the leeward boat, uh, but the leeward boat must sail no higher than their proper course. That's if you're bound by proper course. If you have bluffing rights, the leeward boat can take the windward up boat up above its proper course all the way to head to wind. So let's figure out when we're bound by proper course. I call it good overlap versus bad overlap. So good overlap makes, uh, to me, as a leeward boat, means that I can do whatever I want to this windward boat if I have good overlap, if, if I have luffing rights overlap. Um, bad overlap means that I'm bound by lame proper course. I just got to go to sail the next mark. So the, the only way to establish bad overlap um, is what I call, um, or bad overlap means that I'm bound by proper course, is if a leeward boat sails up from clear behind of a windward boat. So if a, if a boat's sailing along and a leeward boat sails to leeward of them, they must sail straight to their next bar. If you are a leeward boat, you sail directly up behind a windward boat, the windward boat still must avoid you, but you can only sail to your next bar. All other ways of establishing overlap give the leeward boat luffing rights. Hmm. Um, Ryan, what is one other way that a boat can establish overlap besides sailing up directly behind them? Um, I guess best guess would be like tacking or jiving into an overlap, but I, I Perfect. Don't, yeah. That's correct. So if a, if a leeward boat sails, if a boat sails to leeward another, of another boat, they say, head up, head up. The winner boat will say, sail to your next mark. You have no lofting right, proper course. But if that lured boat jibes and jibes back, now they've, they've established overlap and they can left that boat. Or if a boat is sailing up wind and another boat tacks to leeward of them, they can left that boat. So tacking or jibing into overlap gives you instantaneous lofting right. Peter, what's another way we can establish overlap? Windward boat overtaking. Correct. If, a, if, a, if an unsuspecting windward boat, uh, uh, just a, a little sheep, comes to windward of a leeward boat, then you can just love that boat. Love that, Peter. Um, Ethan, what's another way we can establish overlap? Uh, trying to think. Can you see my PowerPoint? Because the answer's on there. Oh, sorry. I was looking at something else. Um, uh, I, what do you mean? So um, the other one would be uh, hand. Um, if you approach from behind, but but from two lengths to the side, yep. if you're like, if you're not, if you're not, if you come right like inches of the boat, but if you come from like two full bolt lengths to the side of the boat and, and from behind, then you get good overlap. Gotcha. Um, so, Jack, what's one way to establish good overlap? We've gotten them all. Uh, you do have your slide on the on the screen to answer from before. So I, I don't want to cheat, but the last way is- No, we're just reviewing, you, we're just reviewing. I, uh, it's not cheating, we're just reviewing it. Of good overlap? Good overlap. Um, I missed the question, sorry. What is, we're just reviewing the ways to get good overlap. It's on the screen, just say it to me. Okay. Uh, one of them is if the windward boat approaches through their own actions coming from behind. If you do something, Lutton. love it from behind. Cool. Lawton, what's another? If you tack or jibe into tack or jibe. an overlap. Emily, what's one more? Ah, oh, you caught me off guard. Um... I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Comes in from two bolt lengths to the side. So um, if I've if I've just established good overlap and I'm a lured boat, here's what it sounds like: head up, head up, head up, head up, 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 up. If I'm a if I'm a lured boat and I just established overlap, here's what the conversation sounds like: if I've got bad overlap, head up, head up, and the windward boat says, "Sail your next mark, sail your next mark, proper course." 
Um, and then I jive and jive back and I've got good overlap and I say head up, 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 up. Okay, cool. So we just did a, a big rules thing here, but those are the four rules that we're gonna use the team rights. So we're gonna use port starboard, post tagging have no rights, uh, clear as head, clear as stern, and all this overlap when we're lured proper course stuff in order to mess up other boats and bring Ethan up from six to one and beat Dartmouth at the Mystic Lake team race. Uh, cool, moving on. Any questions so far? I know it's a lot and you don't know me. I have a question. Yeah. Um, let's say you are in a situation where you have a boat and then a boat from a different team and then another boat from your team and you want to get them up to where you are so you luff up the boat behind you. What is what is the best way to make sure that when you're done luffing up, you and still end up ahead of the boat you just left? Love that question. So a lot of new team racers get really into like the geekiness of all the rules and the calls and all the stuff. But my thing is your tactics and I, 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 my definition of tactics are your um, boat to boat strategy. So like how you deal with other, with other boats, your tactics are only as good as your tact. So you can have this really high-minded concept of the play I'm gonna make against this boat and lock them up and move my teammate up. But if you don't have better boat handling than the other boat, you're gonna lose. So my answer to you is have really nice boat handling. Cool. Um, a lot of new team racers try a cool move, but like then like don't trim their mains fall behind. Um, Ali is very reactive. I appreciate it. You're a very reactive student. Um, so what else we got? Um, I think we're getting into team racing now. Oh, breaking the overlap. One more important thing. Forgot about that. If you are a windward boat subjected to luffing rights, you are not trapped. If you head up real fast and break the overlap, you are, you, um, you force the lured boat to head back to their proper course. So let's see if I did a correct diagram here. So in this, in this diagram, we've got a lured boat and a windward boat. And in this situation, I'm telling you that this lured boat has established good overlap and they're about to luff this windward boat. So they start to luff them, at which point the windward boat jams their tiller over and breaks the overlap and shouts that overlap broken, at which point, the lure boat is forced to sail back to their proper course. Does that make sense? Um, uh, Jack, does that make sense to you? Yeah, and then could you talk about how, let's say I was the pink boat and I wanted to be really mean to Ethan. Ethan's the yellow boat. He okay. breaks the overlap. How do I reestablish my overlap here? What are my options? I love that. I mean, it's, it's exactly what we just talked about. So. Um, I, if, if they, if in breaking their overlap, they sailed behind me and then approached from, uh, from behind to windward, that's one way to establish. I could jive twice, depending on what point of sail we're on. I could tack twice. I could sail out a couple boat lengths and back. It's all the same stuff about how to reestablish overlap, but I do like the, the fury that you're showing there. That's good, Jack. Um, cool. So that is all of the fundamentals that we're going to use to Ooh, and mark room. Um, how do we feel about mark room? Um, Sophie, do you have a good sense of room at a mark? Two bolt length circle, three bolt length circle, room, stuff like that? No, I do not have a good sense. <laughs> That's no problem at all. Who have I talked to? Ryan, do you have a good sense of that stuff? Um, very basic. I, yeah. Totally cool. Totally cool. Okay. I for For my... People who've been racing a while, this is all very basic, but team racing is just using these very, very fundamental things in a way that's like malicious sort of team. So we got to go over it. Um, so in a regular, and Pete, keep me honest on this because you know you're really 18, I know that. Um, in a regular fleet race course, as you can see, I've got my um, fleet race situation here, um, my windward mark. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the three bolt length circle, even though in team racing is two bolt length. As we approach the three bolt length circle and a, and a boat enters the three bolt length circle, and it's invisible, a snapshot is taken. 
and anyone who has overlapped inside of the boat that has entered that three boat length zone um, has room at the mark. In this situation, Laura, who has room at the mark? The pink boat does not have room at the mark because they don't have overlap when the yellow one enters. True. Um, Claudia, does that make sense to you? Do you see who, um, that the, the yellow boat has entered with no one overlap inside of them? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Sophie, can you see what I'm talking about here? This yellow boat has entered this invisible three boat length zone. The snapshot is taken and anyone who's overlapped inside them get room, but there's no one currently overlapped inside of them as you can see from this overlap line. Therefore, no one has room inside of the mark. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, I think my next slide has, how about this situation? So resetting, snapshot, yellow has just entered, pink is overlapped inside. Does pink have room to round that mark? Uh, cool. Allie, what does giving room to pink entail? What? Um, the yellow boat would have to move further from the mark to make sure that pink has enough room or... Somewhat. It, Slow uh, down whatever, a little bit. Whatever it takes, the pink just needs enough room to round the mark and not hit any boats to not hit the mark. You can't give them so just little room that they hit the mark or hit another boat. Um, it's called having a semen-like rounding, just getting around it nice and clean. Cool. Um, is that all my basic stuff? Oh, more mark room. Uh, how about this? Um, I forget what it's called, but like stacked overlap. Um, Lutton. Snapshot, yellow has just entered the zone. Who has room on yellow? So every pink boat has room on yellow, so they better start heading up. Yeah, love it. Ethan, why does every pink boat have room on yellow? Um, because they, I'm not really sure, because they all need room to round or? They all want room to round, but they're they are, uh, allowed room to round because as you can see, the pink boat here is overlapped with the yellow boat. This pink boat has overlap on this boat and this pink boat has overlap on this boat. So this, this yellow boat has to give room to every other boat that has overlap on the inside. If we had a situation like this where, um, let me see about this. Okay, how about now? Who has overlap, um, Ethan? Uh, would it still be all four or would it just be the just be three two. down to the left? Okay. This, this one that's off to the right, he's, he's uninvolved. Okay. Um, so that's some mark room stuff. This would normally be a, a real chalk talk, um, a real slower chalk talk. And this is pretty much the same thing as before. These three inside pink boats are all overlap. This green was not afforded overlap. Um, and then just generally the concept of teeth is the, the goal is to get the most teeth. You want a, a necklace of teeth and then you win. Um, so now we're really team racing. In an ideal situation in a team racing, you don't do any team racing. Your goal is to win the start, get to the top mark in first and one, two, three, and go. Your Number one focus is good starts and boat speed. And if that doesn't work, you team race. And we're gonna use all the stuff we just figured out. So back to our course, here's our digital N. Um, as you can see, we round the mark the opposite way. The winner mark the opposite way. We come along this left, left way here. And then we round this one weird. So it's a unique team racing thing. Let's forget starts for now. That's kind of an aggressive, whole different team race thing. You're just more battling with boats and you are in a way that you aren't typically. But we're gonna jump right to the windward mark and talk about mark traps. So um, here we are at mark one. We got good guy in one, bad guy in three. I don't know what the rest of the combo is, but the, I know that my, my, uh, the top of the combo is one, three. Um, Laura, is the yellow boat, is the yellow team winning? 
one three anything is a winning combination. Love it. One three is uh, one three is winning. But I'm going to tell you that if yellow rounds, then he's going to then yellow is going to leave um, their teammate in third exposed to pink um, messing up their race. So even though I've got this one three, it's not stable. If I don't protect my one three and bump it up to a one two, that two is going to fight back and knock my three out. So I've got to attack right now. Peter, what do I got to do? Slow two down. Slow two down. So we're going to use our first team racing maneuver. It's called a mark trap. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get back to that in a second. But our combos, our stable combos are one, two, anything. It's really hard to master the one, two. You've got two boats, they're way ahead. There's no boats between your, your winners there. Your, your third boat doesn't even matter. You can just run. Two, three, four is also a really good combo. Those three boats are, there's no boats in between them messing around. The first boat who's on the opposite team has a hard time back, battling back against three boats that are behind them. The five and the six are back there, they're nothing. One, four, five, it's a weird one. It's also pretty stable. We don't need to get into one, four, five right now. But um, one, three is pretty unstable because if we don't, um, if the one doesn't get that two out of there and move the, your three up into the two, that two is dangerous. They're fighting back. They're, they're pushing your three back and they're messing with you. Two, three, five, also kind of messy because the two, three, five are the good guys. There's that four in there, and they can just start punching back at your five and mess with you. So we want to convert our one threes to two uh, to one twos, and our two three fives to two three fours. Um, so we want to attack immediately. So let's take it back to. Uh, well, I guess here here are some here are some of the plays in team racing. Play one. There's only three plays, and Nutria, you might have a different uh, sense of this. I don't know what you guys did over there. Play one is you're going for one, two, anything. Um, if you're in one, two, or then you just go. If you're in one, three, you convert from your one, three to a one, two. And by that, I mean your, your first boat stops the bad guy in two and moves your three boat up to the second position. Play two, you are in a two, three, four, pretty much just go. Keep the bad guys behind you and go. But if you're in a two, three, five, you move your move that um, the bad guy in fourth back and convert to a two three four. I'm going to skip one four five. That's kind of a complicated one. Um, okay, I'm going to jump back to my windward mark. Ryan, we're in a one three. What do we got to do? Uh, we have to try and convert to a one two by getting rid of the boat in the second position. Love that, Ryan. So I'm in third. I'm, I'm the three. You're the one. We're trying to get rid of Jack Valentino. What are what is what can you do? I'm gonna. I'll just I'll just uh, show you what you can do. Um, if you are this boat and you approach your winner mark, hundred times out of hundred, if you're a winner boat approaching a one three or trying to set a mark trap to make something happen, is you set up a little bit to starboard and windward of this winner mark and just chill. If you sit here. This boat is going to approach and it's going to have to make a move. This pink boat. This pink boat's going, am I going to go high or am I going to go low of this boat in the, in the first position? Um, Sophie, what happens if this pink boat tries to go high of my mark trap? So we're, we're, we're trying to round this way to the left of the mark. If this pink boat tries to go inside at that, at that mark, what's going to happen? um could they luff you up no they can't i'm a lured boat so i'm gonna luff them up and they don't have any mark room they have no overlap so i enter that zone and i go no overlap no one goes in that mark no one gets around but me um claudia so um you're this pink boat you choose to go high what happens to you well is it what you just said i don't have room to round because yeah, i can't no move. room you're stuck. You're jammed. Sorry, Claudia. Bad decision. Shouldn't have gone up there. Claudia, what if you, so, so now you're stuck and now my, my other person gets around and we both go. Cool. So pink is stuffed and they're gone and they're laughing and they're crying. 
um, Claudia, what's your other option as your as, if you're the pink boat? You can't go high. Go around to the other side. Go low. <laughs> Bad choice, Claudia, because um, if you go low and we start going out, because I'm not bomb, it's team racing. I don't want to go around the course. You start thinking we should tack, and I just never do. I just keep sailing and I keep sailing, um, and we just sail off forever, and then we're gone. And you're just like, no, I, I guess you could duck out eventually and go, but you're really just trapped, especially if I go slow and you're kind of up there. You're just in a really bad spot. And my teammate gets around. So if you're setting a windward mark trap, the, the first boat gets up there, muffs, waits for this pink boat to either go high or low, and they either stuff them up or sail them off and away. Uh, cool. The way to defend a against- question. Yeah. So let's say somebody set a mark trap and you're going up to it. What is your best bet for getting out of that mark trap? I, I have, a, uh, that is a good question. Um, it, I, a lot of people look forward in team racing and you just start hyperventilating as you approach a, as you approach a, a trap and you know what's going to happen and you're stuck and you're taken away. But you really got to slow down and trap back. So the golden rule of team racing, which I'll get to, is do unto others as they would have do unto you or whatever. If I'm about to get trapped, I should trap this boat. So I should stop my, if I'm this pink boat, I should stop my boat. And if this boat tries to go low of me, now all three of us are sailing to low of this trap. And then something's got to give and we'll probably all get around. Or if I stop and they go high of me, now we're lusting. Maybe we're all going up here and we're all stuck. Um, and there's more considerations with the boats behind you, but generally, if something's, if someone, if a bad guy's about to do something to you, do it to a bad guy. Um, I have a question also. Oh, I love it. Um, could the pink boat, um, like, oh wait, if it goes like from straight behind or whatever that phrase is, lured, does, or like when it's approaching from like directly behind, that's like one of the bad positions we were talking about. Does that, that help opens. it or does that help the Unfortunately, it hurts it. Um, if you come from, you can only really come from behind in this situation. Um, and you are only allowed to take this mark to their proper course. So you can't really do anything. Usually lured boats are very powerful, but a boat setting a market and when we're, uh, this yellow boat setting this market, this trap is very powerful. Um, any questions here, Jack or, um, uh, Allie, anything I should be focusing on here? Solid. Uh, oh, sorry. What would you do if um, if it was two, if it was a uh, yellow, pink, yellow, and you do that where, you, where it stacks, where you trap back? What What's the outcome of that? Like, is it, there any it, way to prevent that from happening? It's all in the theoretically. When you do it on a board, you're like, well, then you'd be the stalemate because you're all this. But in reality, someone drops a tiller or some the trap doesn't hold and someone splits out, like it all becomes a boat handling thing. But Jack, I think you're asking what happens if I trap back and I'm pink and now we're all stuffed up here? Yeah. Or something. Yeah. So let's think about how that might work. Now we're all drifting in and this guy's still shouting, don't go in there, don't go in there. Um, maybe this pink boat like lose, like uh, is getting, there's so much bad breeze here that this pink boat kind of gets shot out the back and then they're just like, go, go, go. And they quickly get attack off and they're gone. It ends up, once you're in a cluster, it becomes a boat handling match. And then there's other boats coming. So you've got an incentive to keep moving. Now some other smart yellow boat is rolling over the top, going way high of it all and getting past. But these are just the fundamentals. So if you're like especially the beginning of team racing, if you approach a winner boat first and you're not winning with a stable combo, you just set up that trap and a little bit to starboard, a little bit right. Cool. Um, One other uh, question. Yeah, keep them coming. So if you're not um, here, you've got a situation where both boats are coming from the starboard ley line. If you have a yeah. situation where you're the lone starboard ley line defender, what, what are your options against a port tacker coming in on the other ley line? If that pink two boat wasn't on the starboard ley line, you were all alone. So you, so it's one good guy one on, and then two bad guys coming in from different angles? 
uh, it doesn't even have to be two, just one. They're just crossing up at the top. Can the starboard boat park themselves like on the port ley line? Yeah. Or would so, you? What would you do? All right. So there's a winner. There was a winner mark, and there's a starboard boat. Good guy here, and a bad guy in port is coming up here. I would. I would. Um, again, it's a boat handling thing, but I would park my boat like here and be ready for a good acceleration because if I if I um so I say starboard 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 they can't duck me and go under because I'm still kind of right here. You know what I mean? If I leave them too much gap, they can quickly zoom in. And that's how a bunch of new sailors lose, miss that mark. But if you're parked here, they can't duck you. They sort of have to pack. But um, then you get in a weird situation because if you're parked up here and then you try to tack, then this boat behind you is going, rule 13, don't tack, don't tack, don't tack. And now they're, they've got you out there and they're pushing you out. So it's, it gets a little messy. The fundamentals are, this is like the most basic top mark one trap though. And then everything else, we're just using our ports and our starboards and our windward and our leeward. Um, Lutzen, did what? you do a lot of team racing with your new chair? Not really, actually. I mostly did fleet racing. My team racing season got cut short by COVID. So I've only oh, done like two regattas. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, okay, so moving on to Mark II. So let's say we bungle our first trap and now we're on Mark II. We're going to use our leeward, just our straight leeward here. So on this first boat, I've got a bad guy behind me. When this bad guy comes up to windward of me, I'm just going to love him. Super easy. Get rid of him and hold him there and get rid of this other boat. Or then, then sorry, then my other boat sails around. Um, then maybe let's say another bad guy boat tries to go in there. So this bad guy boat is like, ooh, he's up there roughing a boat. Oops, need another boat. Oh well. Then you can, if you're this guy and you're in the zone, you can say, don't go in there, don't go in there. You didn't have room. And you slam the door and this guy's like, oh no. So again, we're just using our leeward to push a boat up. And then if someone tries to go in there, we use our rule 18, which is our mark room and say, you didn't have overlap, you didn't have room. And we shut the door on that one. I don't expect everyone in any way to totally understand what I'm saying for all of this. I'm just trying to um, illuminate you to the fact that in team racing, you can manipulate like four rules. Port starboard, windward, leeward, clear head, clear stern, both tech and have no rights. Proper course and mark room, okay, six rules to um, mess boats up and, and, and win the race. Couple more, couple more situations. Uh, we already talked about this, trap back. If you are coming up against the trap and the golden rule team racing is due unto others. We're looking at our, our mark here again. We're gonna look at mark three. This is where a lot of crazy stuff happens in team racing. Actually, I'll talk about this, this leg here. Uh, the leg between two and three is where a lot of action happens. You've got a lot of boats with a lot of territory to play with. And it's all, it, it ends up being a lot of like, uh, muffing people up and breaking the overlap and fighting. So this two to three leg is very contentious. And you're constantly trying to establish overlap and take people up and sit on their breeze and get rid of them. As we approach lured mark, mark three, um, again, pretty similar setup to mark one, a, a winning boat, uh, your, your trapping boat, Sets up a little to the left and a little over here on the on this fluid mark, which we're going to go around this way on. We're going to go around like oh, sorry, PowerPoint. around this way. Um, you set up in this region, and as any and you say no one goes in there, no one goes in there. Now, if any bad guys try to get in there, or if they try to go this way, you shut the door. You say don't go in there, don't go in there. If they try to go this way, you lock them up, you take them away and good guys can go in there. Um, who do we got? Sophie, does that kind of make sense? I know it doesn't really make sense, but. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> kind of, sort of. This team racing is crazy. Like, you don't really get it. I remember the first million team races I was in, it all just seemed like madness. I didn't understand why it was happening, but after a while when these fundamentals kind of click in, it, there's some some reason to the madness. 
Um, okay, one more mark that we'll go over. Uh, mark four. Quick, quick question on two and three. If yeah, let's say it's like sort of the opposite, and instead of good guy, bad guy, good guy, you've got bad guy, good guy, bad guy. Maybe have another good guy like in four. What do you do if they're starting to? set that trap on you do you just again tr try to trap the person behind you yeah okay so what's the situation bad guy bad uh one more time um just the opposite of this let's pretend the good guys are pink okay so we're the good guys and we're in the two mm -hmm. and um i would so now we gotta think about the larger combo but the other team is in a one three so they're winning so i've got to get rid of that if i'm in the two i've got to get rid of that three so mm -hmm. I don't care about that one. I'm trapping the two. It depends on who's behind me, because if it's good guy, good guy after me, then I'm holding that currently who is the three and holding them out and letting two good guys in. Um, yeah. And also, sometimes you're in like a, let's say you're in a one, five, six. Now you got three bad guys coming at your trap. There's no way to effectively like stop. <clears throat> stop just one boat there. And like, I'm making it so easy with these, but these are just to demonstrate generally, very superficially what you do with these marks. I'm just trying to explain that you can manipulate other boats. But a lot of times you're just trying to compress the fleet and slow people down so that your, your, your good guys can get back in play. So if you're in a one, five, six at the windward mark and you got three bad guys behind you, you set a light, short trap and you just sort of compress the fleet, give your good guys a chance to catch up, and then you get around the mark. And then at mark two, you do a little trap, give your good guys a chance to catch up. Now you're going downwind, and your good guys are sitting on the bad guys' breeze, and you sort of get in the mix, and someone gets to lured. Now we're in a one, four, six. Cool. Now we can fight back. It's like a lot of compression. It's so messy. Um, I know that didn't really explain your answer, but... What you need, what you guys need to do is take these like nuggets of what I've given you, how to apply these rules, and then go like fight and scream at each other on team race course, and then be like, oh, that's what he was talking about. Um, okay, so one more mark. Mark four is similar to our mark three. Um, if I'm this winning boat, I, if I'm this first boat, can't click it. Um, I enter the zone first. If another boat tries to go high of me, I say, don't go in there. If they go low of me, I sail them off. Now I kind of control them. Now, as we sail away, they're just sort of stuck to my leeward and I can sort of luff my sail. And that's a typical team race thing is if you're, if you've got someone to lure it of you, you're, you're kind of controlling them. You've got better breeze. You can luff your jib and it messes them up. And now you're letting your homies pass. That's a quick mark four. And then generally in team racing and, and stuff, you want to be uh, covering. Uh, Jack, can you explain generally what covering is upwind? Yeah, so you wanna either divide the course into three or two sections and make sure that each pair kind of keeps the whole course blanketed and that you're not all stacked up on one side, um, but also that you kind of pick your partner. So if I'm on Ethan, I'm making sure that I'm sticking with Ethan and I'm putting myself between Ethan and the next mark. I love that. The most thing I wanted, everything was good. That was advanced. I want the most basic part, which is covering is keeping your boat between your, the bad guys and the next mark. If you're sailing upwind and, and you go this way and bad guy goes this way and bad guy catches a good puff or a big shift, bad guy passes you. You just want to keep you between bad guy and the mark. So they tack, it doesn't have to be immediate, but you tack um, as you go upwind. Generally, you want to stay on top of other boats. So if we round that that fourth um, that fourth mark and we're heading up to the finish and we're winning, good guys are just going to cover bad guys. We're not going to let them go off anywhere by themselves. We're just going to stay on top of them, tacking until we finish in our winning combo. If we're losing, we want to spread out. We want madness and chaos. We want the bad guys who are ahead of us to miss to not cover us and for us to run off and get some lucky shift and pass them. So if you are winning, you want to cover. If you're losing, you want to spread out and make chaos happen. I think that's close to the end of the slides before we'll just open up the questions and situations and get you guys out of here. Uh, okay, we already talked about luffing other boats downwind. So on that 
typically mostly on that um, between marks two and three, we're downwind. If I'm this um, yellow boat here, and I've got good but good guys behind me, I want to use my luffing rights and my leeward rights, as we talked about. So bad guy sails up to windward of me. I love bad guy, and good guys sail forward. Cool. And bad guy breaks the overlap and they come back down. Well, too bad, my good guys are already past you. Great. Any other thing? I got aggressive on this pipeline. That's basically it. And then there's further resources there. Okay, um, nice, kept to an hour. Still, I do wanna open up the questions. Any questions? Oh, we're doing questions. Jack, give me a question. <laughs> or some, who, who was talking, not Jack? We'll go to Laura first. Uh, Laura. When you're setting mark traps, do you have to worry at all if you're not far enough ahead and the boat behind you has overlap as you enter the zone? Um, okay, depends on the mark. But um, if you, if the, if a, if you're going up to mark one, let me pull that one up. It all depends on the situation. That's one. Okay. Um, Laura, if you, oh, shoot, wrong mark. Three race course. Forget that one. Here's our best one. Okay. Um, Laura, if you are pink boat and you think you're setting a mark trap right now, you are woefully um, stuck because this pink, this yellow boat actually has has room on you. So they're overlapped inside of you and they get room. So if you think I'm about to stuff this boat, um, you, uh, let me think about that. Actually, you sort of can if you, because uh, neither of you, are, this is kind of intense rules wise, but neither Could of you, you are technically- at that point? Depending on how they establish overlap, you actually can. Yeah, you can love them up. Uh, I believe so. It's kind of a weird situation because neither of you are technically fetching the mark. Peter, do you know the answer to that? Peter, you muted. Sorry, I can't. Uh, I can't see your visuals for some reason, so I, I'm not following the, this particular okay. example. That's okay. Um, my first thought is mark room is mark room if you've got it. Well, it's a little weird because you're not actually fetching the mark. So I believe you're okay. allowed to luff that boat uh, depending on how you established overlap. But that's kind of an, a weird situation. For some reason, it doesn't really come up. Um, let me think about this. Stump the, the teacher here. So if you established overlap if you're sitting here and then they sail to windward of you and then both of you sail into the, into the zone, yeah, I think you can luff them, but I'm not certain, but that's a weird one that you won't encounter for a while. What if the yellow boat is the one that's trying to set the mark trap? And so the pink boat doesn't have room on them, but doesn't the yellow boat have to make a semen-like rounding and so therefore can't do a mark trap? Well, the weird thing is, and I'm unfortunately rusty. So every four years they release a new call book and the rules kind of change a little bit. And I know this changed last few years, but technically neither of these boats are fetching the mark. This is sort of like approaching a fleet race mark on port. Like you don't really have mark room until you're on starboard and getting around. So my current understanding of this is that um, you can't, you don't have, neither of you has to round the mark. You can just keep sailing, but I'm not, positive about that so yellow boat doing a mark trap here would not actually be a violation of their needing to do a decent rounding because no boat has to give them some mark rounding room yes i believe so i wish that i knew the correct the totally definitive answer but team racing is very intricate um i know that it once you push uh once you take if you're this yellow boat and you're holding this leeward boat out, once you pass um, the ley line, this leeward boat, no matter how the overlap is established, is allowed to luff you. 
they're allowed to luff you once you pass the ley line. But I think otherwise you're allowed to just sail them off. Can I ask Weird. a related question? Send it. So the just to clarify about heading people up, if I wanted to head up Claudia and I wanted to be really mean and I wanted to just keep going, keep going, keep going, what's the yep. point where Claudia has to put her hand up and say, whoa, 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 that's that's too far? How far can you head someone up with luffing rates? You can't tack yourself. But if they have to, if their boat handling is such that they tack, that's fine. But that is probably not to get to that. But you can't yourself go past head to wind. And then uh, just another question about fetching a couple slides earlier. Yeah. So the slide 20 or 21. Okay. Uh, I might need to see it one more time. So if we ignored the green boat, it's like a fleet racing and a team racing question, wouldn't the, those three other pink boats wouldn't actually have room in reality because they would all have to tack within the circle or fetch to get to the mark. So like yeah, if I was like really stacked down, could I, like if I was really low on somebody, I couldn't actually say room and then like drift up, could I? I've seen it. Okay. And you kind of can, but it's like, that's a sloppy move that no one's going to do because it shuts the race down and you're, like only a really bad boat would call for it and then try mm -hmm. to hold up six boats and hit the mark. But if let's say you're all laying the mark or close to laying, yeah, you can, you, you are allowed room. Even if and even like that, that bottom most boat, like what's the, what would those two top pinks and the yellow even do? If I was that bottom pink boat and I said room, they would have to almost go head to wind to let me sneak in. No, they would just get pinwheeled. Like in this situation, so in this like badly drawn situation, there the yellow boat is really overstood, and the pink, the lowest pink boat is like on ley line basically. So mm -hmm. you just like do this big pinwheel rounding. And if I saw, so let's say I'm the yellow boat, and for some strange yeah. reason I'm like, you know, leading this one. Do do I have to? I don't have to let those other pink boats in front of me. I just have to let them round the mark. So having room doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go in first around everybody else, right? Um, like if I'm the yellow, I don't, I, if I can sail straight like over the top of the pinwheel, can I do that? Or do I have to let those other three pink boats? No, no, they don't know. Well, one, two, no, three. No, no, no. It wouldn't work like that. You're just, you're pretty much just sailing a weirdly larger. I want to just say the answer is no. Like you would just, you'd still be ahead of them. You'd just sail up and you'd probably end up rounding ahead of them just further okay. away from the mark after. So I can end up in front. It's not like be, them being overlapped and he doesn't give them the right to just like take that place. If no, I can sail just, faster, I'm allowed to keep going. You're, you're just obligated to make sure you don't make them all hit each other, hit the mark as a result of you being the highest boat there. Gotcha. Give them a part, path to the mark. It's all they're entitled to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pete. I'm thinking two more questions. I have one. Peter. Have the new rules that are just in effect changed any of this? Does anybody know? So there is a, a team race call book that comes out every year or every three or four years. I have not read it. I've been out of the sailboat coaching game for a few years, but I'm back as of this spring. I'm talking about callbook. the basic sailing rules. Oh, um, I haven't seen anything that I, that is interesting in the RS, but it says 2021 to 20. Oh, there is a new book out this year, Peter. I should take a look at that. Um, I do not know the answer. What it's worth, I have not received mine. I'll show you guys one dumb move that I like just as a team race thing. So there's this thing called the team race call book. It has like, 50 or 60 pages of weird situations and rules. So it's like, what if this boat came in here? Then what happened? What would this happen? What would this happen? Very interesting if you like team racing. So here's a dumb thing that I figured out, a dumb little play that like is not applicable, but it's kind of fun. And it's just like, um, shows you why the call book is kind of interesting. Okay. Um, in the new, uh, the last version of the call book, it said that, <clears throat> um, if a 
boat is set up at the winter mark on starboard and another boat comes in and tacks into overlap, they have room. But my assumption was that not everyone knew this rule. So it's kind of weird. It's not typical, but the call book says that if you are, even if you're, you're, you've been in this zone forever, you're the starboard boat, you're just chilling, you're setting up a trap and, a, and another boat sails from port, tacks in, establishes overlap, boom, they get room. But I figured not everyone figured that knew that rule. So I call this time bomb because um, in my mind, this starboard boat who's been chilling here, this pink boat, is not aware of this rule that this, this port boat has tacked into, um, into room. So they think that they've got a boat up there that they're just trapping. So, all, so there's like a time bomb going off that, that this pink boat doesn't understand that they've got a boat that requires room. So now when the good guys start coming, yellow starts screaming, give me room, give me room. Pink is so confused. Time bomb has gone off. Yellow demands room and they get around. Weird little call, very little known, but it's a thing. Um, so if you check out the team race call book, you can check out situations like that. For that scenario, would yellow's room oversee pink's luffing rights? Let me think about that. That goes back to your earlier question. You're, 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 you're really gotten to a question. I think that there might be some sort of proper course of two boats that are that need room if they both enter the zone at the same time or with this instantaneous overlap. So I love what you're saying there and I wanna figure that out. I feel like they, they, there's some rule that they must go intact because they both have room or the, the, the yellow boat has room, good room on the inside. Sounds like I don't know what's my rules the, that well. What's yeah. the rationale for, I mean, if I'm the paint boat and I've set up inside and I'm you know, gonna nail this mark trap, what's the rationale for letting a boat that was never overlapped with me get inside? It seems to negate the whole premise of the snapshot. Uh, wait. If you're the pink like boat and you set up the, tar the mark trap? Yeah, so what's the, like you snapshotted, I'm inside the zone and no one, you know, this yellow boat's not at all overlapped with this me. It's a weird new thing. There's a weird new Why, thing. Why, what's the rationale for letting a yellow boat do that? Because neither boat is technically, sorry, as people who don't totally super get this, but neither boat is technically fetching the mark. So like no, neither boat is actually on the ley line or getting around the mark. So rule 18 doesn't fully apply kind of technical here but all i can tell you is if you tack into overlap from this angle you get room it's gonna, it's no gonna require a letter to u.s sailing it seems a little problematic oh, jack you're very you're very verbose i like this email. seems jank. I like all the outreach <laughs> this seems jank i'm sending uh, that email to u.s sailing this seems jank period it's i think it's called uh i think it's called 56 or something like that in this, in this team race call book um, okay, quickly, Sophie, what, give me something you learn here. And then we'll get it. Well, well I'm going to ask everyone then we're going to get out of here. For real. Um, for real, this was a really good refresher on like the rules, even for fleet racing, because I've never really had like the greatest grasp of um, all the different rules. So that was helpful for me. Cool. I mean, pop open that rule book. You just Google racing rules of sailing. Part two, when boats meet. I mean, you really need to only know like rules 10 through 20 and only most of those. So I love it, but this is a, this is a refresher. Jack, what'd you, what'd you learn besides this infuriating call 56? Uh, well, I was gonna go with call 56. My mind's kind of blown on all the rationale behind that. Um, one thing that I learned was, um, I learned that one, four, five is stable. I've always thought that, that was unstable. But uh, is it, it like, was, I was always like one, four, five always scares me that it's unstable. Um, why is one, four, five stable? I think it's stable. There's no way to I'm, become uh, unstable. I'm happy with it being stable. We didn't talk about one, four, five. I haven't thought about one, four, five in a long, in a long time, but the, the way you make it stable is by the five gaps. So the five pushes that six way back there and then just makes them hate their lives. So now you've got, uh, it's really hard to 
do that to for the two and the three to mess with that five if he's all the way back with these six. Okay. That's one thing I learned. I may consider one four or five unstable. That's not my understanding of it. Um, Ryan, what do you got? Um, I'm I've never team raced before, so just kind of seeing like just like the layout for it and sort of how it goes was yeah helpful. It's fun. I think of it like Mario Kart or Mario Kart Battle. I don't know if anyone played Mario Kart, but you can battle it. Uh, it's I, there's no more fun in sailing than team racing. It's so fun. Um, Claudia, what do you got? What'd you learn? Um, I learned why like the mark trap works. I didn't really know all the rules kind of around that. Cool. Yeah. I'd love to see you set one up at perhaps an alumni regatta, which maybe we'll host after all this happens. Are we doing that? I'll ask about that later. Um, Ethan, what'd you learn? Uh, the over overlap rule that relates to mark room. I really was kind of confused about before, so that definitely cleared up. I didn't super clear it up. Um, Laura got me on this thing that I'm not sure about, so I like being challenged. That'll be my thing. Laura, what'd you learn? I didn't realize that you there were any times when you couldn't left someone up, so that was good. Oh, to... God, the umpires probably love you. <laughs> Never raced um, in terms of team racing, so. Cool. Well, um, now we know a little bit about good overlap, bad overlap. Those are terms I've never heard from anybody else, by the way. No one used that. That's just my thing. Um, go to about Allie, what do you got? Um, I learned what to do if somebody sets a mark trap and you end up in it. Sweet. Trap back. Um, and don't get caught. Peter, what'd you learn? I learned that there's a mark book and I'm going to ask Peter to send me a copy to the link. I mean, a playbook. A call book, not a playbook. Call book. book. Call book is what umpires read before they go out and umpire. It's on the list of required reading. I'll send it out tonight. It's long, but it's fun to do it for winter sessions or whatever in the library. You just sit around and analyze calls. It's kind of fun. Well, thank you all. Uh, the team, when I was there, meant like the world to me. And it's just so great to see it thriving and wonderful people taking care of it. So thank you all. It's really a pleasure to be here. Tommy, thank you for doing this. We'll be in touch, Peter. We'll talk. How about everybody. we do it again? Call me. I'm with, around. A, with, with a more informed, more enthusiastic group. This is enthusiastic and informed, but I'm going to come back ready for all of Laura's questions next time. <laughs> Maybe one all about starting two or all about the leg two to three. Could be cool. I could have done this for three hours. I'm just limiting myself. So you come to me with questions. I'll come to you with, with content. Part two, cool. baby. Call me. We'll talk, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you so Thank much, you. Tommy. Thank you.